Test, test, is this thing working? All right, it's working. Um, I'm going to try something a little bit different this time. Uh, usually when I would make these videos, I would prepare a huge wall of text and I would read that huge wall of text. And something magical happened the last time I was editing my video. Uh, everything was set, everything was in place. I clicked play and I was bored. Just listening to it for the first time back, I was quite a bit bored. Um, and this is my baby. And I'm bored of my baby. And if I'm bored of my baby, then I can only guess what everyone else is feeling towards it. Not good, that's for sure. Uh, the reason I was trying to go for this written approach is because I thought it would help me align everything much better. I wanted to be more in control of everything. Uh, and now I figured, you know what, just just let it roll. Just, just just try something a little bit different because I kind of, everything was under control, but I lost a lot of potential energy the video could have had. Uh, so, so yeah, initially I thought, yeah, this is fine. Uh, I was kind of going for like the Bellular approach. And if you play a lot of Blizzard games, you probably know who Bellular is. Uh, but the thing is, he delivers gaming news, uh, so his kind of written approach makes more sense. Um, I'm just a dude painting. I I'm basically talking about my feelings. There there's no reason for me to, to write down a huge wall of text. Uh, I'm not going through any like important statistics or anything like that. Um, so yeah, so how I planned this out is, is I just have these notes that are basically chapters. That's it, just chapters. So I'm gonna read out the chapter out loud and then I'm gonna get into what I was thinking when I wrote down the chapter. Uh, so the first one is thumbnails. So what I'm painting here is like a secret military holy force, like a secret military order of the church. Um, and the main thing around them is they're sneaky. Um, they're usually the type who set, they use guerrilla warfare, they set down explosives and then run, or they strike from the shadows, cut some demon neck, and then go back into the shadows and repeat until you're done. Um, so my first thumbnail was supposed to be an interior. Uh, the camera is placed above him, he's holding a sword in one hand, and the demon head in the other. Um, and then above him, you have some kind of architecture element. It was supposed to be some kind of wooden ruin. And you could see a humanoid fig figure like staring down at him. Uh, that was supposed to be like a terrified demon who just hid from him and is trying to avoid him and trying to keep knowledge of his location so that he could avoid him better. So, so yeah, it was kind of subtle and kind of badass. Um, the second one... Uh, again, he's holding a sword, he's holding a demon head, and the demon is running away from him. Uh, now, this one is almost kind of comical for me, because it reminds me of that meme with that little girl who's, like, holding a chocolate bar or something, and then they photoshop that she's running away from, like, Godzilla or Dwayne The Rock Johnson or whatever. Uh, so, yeah, that one was... It had a lot of meme value, but I decided to not go for it. Uh, the third one is is a bit of a tonal shift. It, it went from this dark hunter to mission accomplished. Um, again, same thing, uh, secret agent, agent holding a uh, demon head in one hand and the sword in the other, and behind him there's his buddy with uh, crossed hands and a lot of self-confidence. And they're in like a church setting, so it was supposed to be this really nice contrast where you have these uh, guys in dark leather uh, full of various types of weapons on them, daggers and, and stuff like that, uh, and they're in this holy setting. So you kind of got this feel that you were looking at a secret meeting, because they don't belong here, they're not supposed to be here, but no one is pushing them out, so they're here for a reason, like something is happening, they're probably getting another secret mission or something like that. Um, the fourth thumbnail, uh, same as the previous one, it's just that this time the guy has a raised sword and demon head in hand. It, he's, he's displaying a bit more pride here. He's, he's victorious and he's gloating in his victory. 
Uh, now, the, a slightly different approach. Uh, you've got this church setting again, uh, but this time the guy like pinned down a demon, and the demon is supposed to be the viewer, so it was as if he pinned down you, the viewer. Um, and I really like this one, but I realized that I kind of want something even more dynamic. I, I basically wanted to realize I wanted to show them in action. And the problem here was that he was just kind of standing. Like, I, I wanted to show him in battle, but here he was after the battle. He was already victorious. He wasn't fighting, he, was, he just won. Same thing, secret agent, sword in hand, demon head in the other his buff buddy right behind him, and behind him was supposed to be like a smoking battlefield, but that wasn't good enough. And the last one you see here is the one where like a demon hound jumped at him and he impaled it with his dagger, so he has like amazing reflexes and he got him right in the air, and then behind him was supposed to be another demon ch charging right at him. Um, so in the end, I went for the version you see here. Um, where he is running, and, and as he is running, he cuts a demon twice, once across his chest, and another time, another instance across his arm. So, the next chapter, the meaning of his facial expression. So, a lot of artists, if they were painting this, he would kind of be probably screaming, yelling, charging, he, he would have like a really intense face, a lot of rage depicted and, and stuff, stuff like that, like something a little bit barbaric. But that's not what these guys are about. Um, like his expression, it, it's it's rather calm. Like he seems agitated. He seems, I guess you could say, hateful. But he is not panicking. He is calm, and that's what kind of makes these guys even more terrifying. The fact is that they are completely used to situations like this, and there is no reason to panic. He did this a hundred times. He's gonna do it a thousand times again. Uh, this is just another day in his life. This is just his job. The knife in the back. So I suppose there's, there's a little bit of a story behind the knife that's behind him that he's holding right behind his back that's cutting the demon's hand. Uh, the first version he was supposed to be running forward and as he was running forward the knife was supposed to slice through a demon hand. But I figured that's a bit too much because I, I'm kind of trying to keep them grounded and this scene is already dramatic, as dramatic as it gets, um, I, I don't need to make it even more unrealistic. So, it would take an insane amount of strength to just pull a dagger as you're running to not lose momentum and to just slice through demonic bone and flesh. So I figured that's, that's a bit too much. Uh, so in order to make it kind of more realistic, I decided no, he's just um, slicing the demon's hand. Uh, my idea was that he kind of raised that dagger in the last second right as the demon was raising his hand, so it's kind of... He's kind of using this dagger to cut and to block at the same time, so the idea is that the demon would like raise his hand, get cut on the dagger, and then reflexively move his hand back. So I guess it makes a little bit more sense than just slicing through so much material. Next is design every paint stroke. So this is something, this is kind of a mindset that I have while rendering. Like, re rendering can actually be kind of intimidating because you're kind of almost done. You're pretty much done, like everything is set, and what do you do now? Like, like how do you render this? How do you make this look better? Uh, so what I do is I take all the messy brush strokes that I have, that I gotten as I was building up the piece, as I was placing shadows, placing lights, designing objects and stuff like that, and I design every paint stroke. I, I make every paint stroke look paint... I make every paint stroke look better. So the easiest way to describe this, I guess, would be imagine if you took every single brush stroke and just isolated it. Would this shape look good? Would it look fun? Would it look interesting? Would the eye follow it nicely? Or would it have like a chunky blocky shape that instantly communicates something to the viewer? So that, that's really it. Uh, and while I'm designing this, uh, these paint strokes, um, I'm also keeping in mind what kind of material I'm painting and what kind of object is my paint stroke bending around. Uh, so every paint stroke is supposed to tell a little bit of a story, a little bit of the surface of the object. And the last chapter is painting abstract. 
just keep going. Um, th this is my mentality when I paint abstract. Uh, just have faith. Have faith in yourself and, and just keep going. Like mainly, uh, I didn't have an abstract approach to this painting. I did the line art, I, I did the values, I did the shadows, I did everything in order. Um, I had an abstract approach to the background. The background was like, yeah, whatever. It, it's kind of a sandstorm. Uh, that there's not really, you can't really make a mistake where painting painting a, a sandstorm as long as it looks like it's moving, it going in a certain direction. Like yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Like everything else is a question of how real do you want it to be, or do you have a certain style? Um, so, the the thing about painting abstract or or the problem with it is that uh, my approach is to first design the shapes, make the line art, then, then design the values, then make sure the values work, then put in some shadows, then put in one light source, then put in another light source, and then kind of put in another light source that's just supposed to be kind of ambient lighting, or, or don't do that, and that has its own consequences. So everything has a certain pattern, a certain order, everything has a certain logic to it. I do everything step by step, but when you go abstract, you do everything at once. Uh, you're doing the, the shadows and, and the shapes and the lights and, and stuff like that. You're doing that all at once. Uh, so it's, since this is kind of impossible to do, it's, it's actually an ongoing experiment where the mentality you're supposed to have is, is first off, you're just supposed to start. Just do something. Uh, make a lot of mistakes. Uh, try to depict when you, what you have in your head or what you have on a thumbnail and make a lot of mistakes and then start fixing them, those mistakes and keep fixing them until it looks good. So, so that's what I meant by just keep going, J just keep painting, just make new brush strokes, just make new sh shapes, just push everything a little bit, uh, play around with it until it's done. Uh, and, and don't be surprised if you like drastically change everything. Like if you start abstract, that's, that's perfectly normal. Uh, like you'll start out with one abstract sketch and you'll end up with a completely different painting. Um, unless you're really lucky or really, really good at it and you know what you're doing, like maybe then you could kind of one shot everything to use a, a gamer term, I guess. But yeah, otherwise it, it's kind of a fun struggle. It, it's constant problem solving and, and fixing mistakes. Uh, so that's the way you're supposed to look at it. J just keep fixing mistakes and make new mistakes and fix them again and have faith in yourself and have faith that you'll end up with a good painting at the end. So that's it for this little video. Uh, thank you for watching and see ya.